Well, hello there. My name's HW. That's my line. is HW. And I'm Stu G. And we are really excited to be bringing you the Stu G Collection. Yes. Over 2019, we're going to be releasing a collection of Kemper profile packs, um, IRs, even some Helix presets. Can't wait. It's, um, it's really a capturing and uh, a bringing together of your pretty incredible collection of really awesome guitar amplifiers. You've got some really Killer stuff, Steve. Yeah, thank you so much. We're, we're going to start with like what I call the sort of classic amps. So uh, some of the more vintage pieces, uh, Voxes, Marshalls, my yeah. Park, which is my favourite amp in the world. Yeah. And uh, and that really will cover a lot of the tones of the uh, Delirious era. Sure. Um, and then we can get into that. In a bit. Yeah, one of my favorite things has been hanging out with Stu and having him pick up a really awesome guitar and a really great amp and turn it up and go, oh yeah, this is uh, this is uh, my glorious right here. And then play it and it sounds like the record or this is this is King of Fools, everything, right? Just, it's this amp, you know? Um, you've got some really, really great stuff. Tell me about the park. Cause you, yeah. this is your number one amp. Yeah. You're, you're using profiles of it right now on the road that That's we right. made. Um, but Where'd you get it? You've used it on everything. Yeah. How's it sound? Why? Why do you love it? So I love. Uh, I mean, the Park is my favorite amp of all time mm -hmm. that I own. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, it's the one that I wouldn't ever get rid of. Right. I mean, right. If, if I had to take one to a desert island, yeah, that had it's the power, desert island amp. You know, yeah. that would be my that be my amp. So I I bought it um, after Mesomorphis. So yeah. um, it, it wasn't on the early stuff. Uh, so I got it sometime between Mesomorphis and Glow. And, um, <clears throat> but it's kind of become my, my favorite amp. So um, uh, I got it from um, Charlie Chandler at um, the, the, the time was at Chandler Guitars in Kew. And, um, and word has it that he's regretted selling it ever since. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bet, I bet. And um, I know that Daniel Steinhardt from the Gig Rig, like yeah. they, all these yeah, guys, yeah. they know about this amp. Right, right, right. So right. Uh, they're all like, oh, you know, have you still got that amp? Like, yeah. what's going on with that? So, um, yeah, but it's just my favorite thing. So the, the story behind Park is that it's, it's a Marshall amplifier. Yeah. Um, they had, uh, I think this is right, but they, they had some kind of restriction in terms of their distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jim Marshall still wanted to make sort of more uh, different colors of amplifiers. So he changed the, the circuits a little bit and then gave them uh, the name of his wife's uh, maiden name, right, which not is his Park. name, not his Marshall, name. but yeah, Park, yeah. which is uh, clever. His wife's maiden name, and uh, and then sold him through a shop in Birmingham to begin right. with, I think. Uh, so, um, yeah. So this uh, amp has a it's a fifty watt combo, mm -hmm. two by twelve with reverb. Yeah. Um, it has um, uh, a, a a link already made, so it's not like four inputs. Yeah, it's not, three inputs. Right. Right. So gain one, gain two, and a link. Right. Um, which is really like the the magic th moment for me. Everybody links yeah. four input markers, so, right? Um, and then another special thing about it is that on, on gain one, um, up to about 12 o'clock, it has some kind of resistor in the circuit. Mm -hmm. And so and it's taken out like a bunch of low end. Mm -hmm. And so it's really kind of like AC-like yeah. until you start winding up the gain yeah. and then it turns into JMP territory. Yeah. It's a solid state rectifier. Yeah, it's real mm -hmm. bright chimey yeah and um uh you use that as your clean tone on, yeah. on a bunch of stuff and then and then it really brings in the, yeah the sort yeah of and rock so you, you mentioned uh, my glorious you know yeah. um yeah. it is that amp with everything on full yeah 
um, yeah. and, and my Gibson 135, so um, which we'll get into and yeah. we'll have those profiles available. Yeah, and they sound great. I mean, we've uh, there was a moment we were profiling that amp. Uh, you had a pedal on and we're playing it and you turned it off and then we switched to a, the, the My Glorious settings, we'll call yeah. them. And you were like, is that the Kemper? I was like, that yeah. is the Kemper. Yeah. I mean, it, they, it's, it sound, it's a fantastic sounding amp. Um, and I think we really did a great job capturing it. You're using those profiles now. I mean, yeah. you're, and, and you're using them for a lot of different stuff. Yeah, so um, I tour with Michael W. Smith. Mm-hmm. and um, Never heard of him. About uh, <laughs> 18 months or two years ago, um, we were going to be doing some overseas travel. Mm-hmm. And uh, the sound engineer, um, our monitor engineer, actually, he, he came up to me and said, you know, would you consider like just trying this stuff out? So um, we rented a couple of campers and um, we profiled yeah. the park and my blues breaker and my AC30 and uh, just one profile because mm-hmm. all, all I needed was like something familiar, you know, sure, um, sure. and, and clean. Cause I run, yeah. I run my stage amps pretty clean, just kind of on the verge of breakup or just maybe just like just below it. Right, and, and then, right. and then I'll get all my tones, mm-hmm. all the overdrive tones from pedals, but, um, but something with loads of headroom. So, yeah. um, that's how you do it live, right? That's how I do it live. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, yeah. And so I was really impressed with how the, Camper profiles captured those things, even though I didn't know what I was doing with mm-hmm. profiling, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I used that for a while, and then um, whenever, uh, so whenever we fly to a Nigeria or something, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. then I'll take the Kembers because sure. um, it, it's kind of familiar mm-hmm. tone, never changes, yeah, um, and the uh, and and that's that's that. Um, and then this year we went on a cruise. Uh, so rather than kind of take back line or whatever, sure. which you've got to like move around, I took the took the campers. That worked really well. And then at that point, um, we knew we were going to be doing some orchestra shows on the Christmas tour this year. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, from then on, I've, I've kind of been using the the campers when I've had to have lower stage volume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, um, and it was at that point that we got together and started to profile some of the amps and yeah. and so I've been using the park profiles the tone junkie park profiles um and um it's been fantastic yeah. you know? so even on like jazz stuff like yeah. for the christmas tour right right um with the big uh, yep, silver with the big silver falcon yeah, the silver falcon there. yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah so um uh brilliant uh, that's a brilliant pack yeah. and it's just the beginning yeah 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 i'm really excited about it um and that's really cool you're you're finding use for um, I mean, who'd have thought? You like your favorite amp clean and dirty. So I yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Big surprise. But that is going to be, that's going to be the first release, yeah. right? We're going to do that because that's um, so much of your sound. And really, it's the one you were like, let's get this done so I can use these on the road, right? That's right. I mean, Absolutely. I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, those have come out really great. Um, I think the Sue said it best. Um, we I showed him these profiles and he said... Um, it's familiar yet unique, and that to me is kind of the sound of the park. It is like that Marshall-y thing, but there's something kind of unique about it. Maybe it's a solid-state rectifier, it, it, but it 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 has this really beautiful sag quality when you get yeah. it really loud. It almost gets into this kind of the best parts of fuzz pedals, which I know you're a big yeah. fuzz fan. Yeah, you know? that's right. Yeah, so you know, I, I really want. Um, Headroom is a really important thing to me. Mm-hmm. So I've favored, um, since I've been into fuzz, mm-hmm. I've favored non-master volume amps. And um, if I've needed to turn the volume down, I've been using hot plates or master right, right, right. Sure. power brakes or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I, I think that, and I think this with pr- probably every amp that I love, yeah. that two thirds of the sound is the speaker in the cabinet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, um, and so the cabinet, I, I think that one of the unique things about that park is probably the 40 year old, yeah. um, yeah. G12 M's. Yeah. They're these uh, black back mm. sort of, uh, Celestian speakers yeah. in there. Yeah. From, they uh, sound great. So actually Celestian speakers are from my hometown in the UK. Really? I was, I was born in Ipswich, Suffolk. Yeah. The home of Roller Celestian yeah. UK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. And There's I have a great relationship water, with those guys actually. Yeah. So, um. Uh, yeah, 
every amp I use has got Celestian speakers in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, those are killer speakers. I that was one of the first things I noticed. I'm excited to get some IRs of those speakers so yeah. that they can go into the, the digital world of yeah. everybody who can't have a yeah. Well, that a cabinet, stage. yeah, the, the park cabinet and speaker like that. It, it sounds amazing to me. Yeah, I think it's what makes that that for me. That's what's unique about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some some amps I will say you know you you get them and when you underpower them you know they have sweet spots maybe you, you might think of it that way they sound really great like at the edge of, edge of breakup or they sound really great full on that thing really maybe it's the resistor that makes it sound AC thirty ish clean uh -huh. it really sounds great clean and it sounds uh, pun intended glorious right, yeah. <laughs> it, it really does, does sound it really does yeah. sound great mm -hmm. and um, uh, sound guys liking them. Wow, absolutely. The, uh, so our, our current front of house guy is a guy called David Avalar, mm -hmm. and um, I wish I'd caught this on my iPhone, but he randomly came up to me and said, "Man, like those uh, those Kempers are sounding fantastic, really fantastic." He said, um, "I'm not touching the EQ, like they they sit in the mix perfectly." Yeah. And um, so this is with the like I've got the park. Um, I was using the Park L1. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Which the is, channels linked together, channels linked, clean. But, but clean. Yeah. Um, and the um, Super Reverb, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Super, yeah. Yeah, you just say it fast. Super Reverb. Super Reverb. <laughs> <laughs> get it? So, uh, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, but I can't wait to get my other profiles in there and, yeah. uh, and be using those too. But, yeah, front of house guy... Uh, with Mark W. Smith, just really rates that yeah. sound. Yeah, and that's one of the things we really tried to do with this pack was, I mean, we sat down and just said, okay, how would you use this? Mm -hmm. Like, let's let's not just capture the amp, but how would you, you know, use it? And we've got out a bunch of guitars. We're constantly switching from your Tele to a couple of your Gretches, yep. trying it on the Strat, getting the Les Paul Les out, Paul. making sure all the tones are there, and trying it out. And these are the tones... Just as you would dial yeah. them up, you know. I mean, yeah. there. That's that's what we sat down yeah. and tried to get how how you're going to use them yes. live. You know, I, I I think there's two things for me. One is live. One is studio. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to overwhelm people with multiple multiple options. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is fair to say that I would use amps differently in the studio to what I use live. So sure. you know, I'd be getting more of the gain mm -hmm. uh, and distortion out of the amplifier in the studio. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in these packs, uh, there, there'll be a few options of, of, uh, of tones, but it's not like we're not overwhelming people because yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to, uh, you know, for instance, with my park, um, I'll be using that with my telly, with my strap, with mm -hmm. my Gretsch, whatever, with the Duesenberg, you know, yeah. and the 135. Um, and I'm not going to be super finickety on, like, tweaking it for each yeah. guitar yeah. you know it's kind of um and that's that's my it's sound it's just gotta sound good with everything yeah the guitars yeah. sound yeah. different yeah the yeah so so that's it really yeah yeah, yeah. that's very cool you've also got an incredible like the most incredible vox hmm. that i've ever seen <laughs> i'm thinking of stealing it I'm a, I'm a little bit in love i won't steal it uh i'm a little bit in love with this original 62 yeah. vox ac30 yeah. pre-top boost mm -hmm. copper panel it is as hot as like a volcano when, when it's on. I mean, it is. It is so. It was. It really yeah. could. You could heat a small room. I mean, That's you, could, right, yeah. you could turn off your heater and heat a small room. Um, <laughs> it, but it is. It's one of it. I've profiled a lot of amps. I've pro, we've talked about this. I've profiled a bunch of boutique amps, and there's a there's a boutique voxy sound. You know, people say this sounds voxy. This sounds voxy. And then you play a real Vox and you realize, wow, nothing sounds like this. Yeah. And this thing has original Celestian Blues in mm -hmm. there. I mean, it it, it sounds, you, you got the Gretsch out and immediately mm -hmm. it was like Day Tripper. I mean, it was like that sound. It was the sound of all those classic recordings. Yeah. It was beautiful. And it was just a sound you could hear would just sit in a mix well. It would just cut yeah. bright. But that doesn't get harsh yeah. in the high end. I yeah, and that was just guitar straight in. I know. Yeah. So yeah. it's, a, it's a immediately, like, I've got a 66 Duo Jet, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the George Harrison guitar, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah, an incredible guitar. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And so we profiled it with that, you mm -hmm. know? And so, yeah, you've got that Beatles sound, the Kinks. Yeah. You know, it's it's that it's that era sound, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and immediately. And, and so, yeah, and that's a, that's a great one to... Um, 
to partner to combine with the park. Right. You know, right. I've, I've done that on on the, on the Beatitudes project. Um, the song "Let My Dreams Fly" mm -hmm. was uh, my strat with the uh, my park and that sixty two AC yeah. thirty. Yeah. But um, that that guitar that amp was the uh, was a late addition for me. Yeah. Um, I got it. Um, Around the time of the Mission Bell before King of uh, Kingdom of Comfort mm -hmm. uh, with Delirious, because um, I'd borrowed our monitor engineer has a '63 piggyback AC30, right, right, um, and I'd I'd borrowed that from him. I actually did a little swap um, with him, and I thought it was permanent, but there we go. I went. <laughs> yeah, right. We won't get into that, um, and. Um, but yeah, so that was the sound of, of songs like God is Smiling mm -hmm. um, and, and a bunch of stuff on, uh, on Kingdom of Comfort. And so um, I wanted something similar um, so I, that I could use in the studio. Yeah. I mean, I'd never take that thing on the road. You yeah, know, you, but it's, it's a piece of history. Yeah. It's so, hard to but, take out. Um, yeah. uh, you know, keeping that in the studio. And, and so um, there's, there's a band called Fat Fish in the UK mm -hmm. and... Um, other guitarists had one, and so we we kind of did a deal, and you know, including yeah. cash and amp and what yeah, have you. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and so I now own that that guitar, yeah. that that amplifier. Yeah, it's a killer one. Yep. So we profiled that. We did the uh, bright channel, the mm -hmm. normal channel, um, and uh, what else did we do on there? Uh, linked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the the, right, the right, bright right, and normal right. linked. Right. Yeah. And that's <laughs> and that's um, the and that's. It's such a simple amp, but um, volume, tone, again, non-top boost, yeah. which is not you know, always something that we hear about a lot, but really is a classic Vox circuit. I mean, um, probably most famously, like Morgan has the AC20. Mm -hmm. That's the non-top boost. But other than that, I mean, Voxy amps are 90% top boost out there, but this thing right. sounds killer. I'm really excited for this pack. I think the Sunday morning guys are gonna love it. It's it's the vintage Vox sound, and and these speakers sound great. I'm excited to get an IR yeah. of those. Mm -hmm. It's it's the sound. I think if you go into a studio and want a Voxy AC30 sound, mm. it seems like you put the knobs at 12 and the thing gives yeah. it to you. I mean, it's no, so that's simple. Right. I think the only thing that that we changed in the as we were re recording the profiles mm -hmm. was that um, the uh, the cleaner sounds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, are brighter. So, you know, we have the tone cut at, mm -hmm. at say, um, you know, nine o'clock or whatever. Um, and then the, um, once you start really overdriving it, it's the same with Marshalls. You yeah, just yeah. want to brighten it up right, a little sure, bit. So, sure. so they, it, you know, we, the tone cut then goes yeah. to six o'clock. Yeah, you get more low end and more mid range yeah. coming in as the gain goes up and stuff. Uh -huh. I'm really excited. I think those will make um, great pedal platforms. And yeah. I'm excited for you to try those out yeah. With with the park profiles, that's right. Can't wait, and um, that's going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. What else do we got coming up in the uh, in the pack here? So we profiled the my Marshall yeah. uh, Blues Breaker. I believe it's called the Arshall. It is the Arshall because the M is missing. <laughs> the M yeah. is missing. So, so it's it's going to be called Stu G's Arshall. Yeah, that's yeah, right. The Arshall Break. So, the, <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, we've got that. So that is a uh, a reissue yeah. uh, that I've got in the nineties. Yeah. Um, so I have two reissue. Classics. Mm -hmm. One is the the Blues Breaker, and I've got a, a Korg era Vox AC30, yeah. which honestly is one of the best sounding AC30s I've got. I mean, yeah. I know we love we all yeah, love yeah, the yeah. 62, yeah. but um, that AC30 is an incredible yeah. amp too. Yeah, I know oh, uh, both are going to be both are going to be in here. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, yeah, but they they're both made in the Marshall factory. Mm -hmm. um, I I I went and visited the the factory yeah. and met Jim Marshall yeah. and um, yeah he one of the kindest people I've met yeah. and uh, just a, a brilliant guy um, familiar with what we were doing actually because we, we yeah, uh, cool. Delirious toured with Bon Jovi and so we right. you know um, uh, he was aware of that and um, yeah so I saw where they were being made and then when we started a tour in the in the US. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, we needed some amps to stay here rather than keep r renting multiple times a year. And so, sure. so you know, I got the uh, the reissue um, Blues Breaker and the reissue uh, yeah. AC30, and they are fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. you've you've paired that Blues Breaker with the uh, 
with the uh, park. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the Blues Breaker has a valve rectifier. Yeah. And right. um, the park has a solid state. So like, there's a great combination there. Yeah. I mean, you know the. Uh, the, the park with its kind of mid-range in, in the sort of cleaner setting and the Blues Breaker with its wider mm-hmm. sort of dynamic range there and also because it's got a little bit more sag. Yeah. Um, it's a great combination. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Punchy, tight, saggy, yeah. kind of breathing thing. Yeah. And, yeah, the, the park at those lower yeah. settings ha- having that more, like, yeah. AC yeah. type of sound yeah. where the Marshall is big and open. Yeah, yeah. so it's something that's worth uh, saying for me is that you know people are they they see that i've got two amps whatever and they're like oh stoogie's a stereo guy right and it didn't start like that Mm -hmm. so um yes there are some delays that i use up from my h9 now that have width and modulation and you know you've got that stereo thing going on but um it starts for me with tone so um i've found that i preferred the blend of Marshall and Vox, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, and you know that you've got the you've got the the attack and the punch with like a depth mm-hmm. that isn't too much, you know, because yeah. like most people are going to be, you know, cutting the low frequencies at hundred or two hundred, even sure. you know. So, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so it, it's really about a blend for me. So the two amp thing really starts for me with sound. Yeah. Um, and how does that sound in mono? <laughs> you know, it's, sure. I'm not interested. At, um, it's not just the stereo. Spread, no, it's the tone of the. It's the yeah. tone of the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so very early on, I was kind of, you know, I had to learn about phasing and uh, yeah, all right, that kind right, of stuff. Right. And so, like before the days of gig rigs and other things with a button that will flip the phase, you know, I had different speaker cables. And uh, some I'd like just swap the phase on one end. Right. You know, because when you turn up to a venue, right. you don't know if you're going to get yeah. um, cabinets that are the same or whatever. So, sure. Ever yeah. get electrocuted? Uh, only it's <laughs> my job as an electrician. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's a different story. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a different story. Yeah. No, um, that Blues Breaker really does um, sound great. And, yes. Um, and a classic circuit from the, the yeah. history of... Totally. Of, uh, uh, of rock and roll, for yeah. sure. And I, I love the, uh, I, again, I love the cabinet on there. So I've got like, yeah. uh, th- that has Celestian Greenbacks in it, um, but it's another thin cabinet, yeah. which, which the story about Eric Clapton. Yeah, what we've ta- I've, I've talked about this before in, in, in other videos and stuff. Yeah, that shape, from my understanding, is because Eric Clapton asked Jim Marshall, I need an amp I can fit in the boot of my car. Yeah. And, for those right. of you who don't, <laughs> yep. that means trunk, yeah. right? I mean, it's it's really the boot. Yeah. <laughs> it's really the boot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he needed to fit in his car, and that's where that shape comes from—that thinner shape. Yeah. That's a little longer. Uh, I don't know how tailor made that was to Eric's car at the time, but right. <laughs> I think it did fit in. There are photos of him from the uh, John Mayles Blues Breaker era of actually it in his trunk. Right. So um, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and the park obviously has, it, it's not quite as thin as the Blues Breaker, but mm-hmm. um, it's another thin yeah. vintage cabinet. Yeah. And so maybe it's that that I love the sound yeah. of so much. Yeah, it could be. I mean, uh, that all affects the sound, mm. but they're two great sounding amps. Yeah. How about uh, the big guy behind us? Yeah, so that's a 73 JMP50. Yeah. Um, and uh, the uh, our front of house engineer uh, back in the day with Delirious, um, at, at this time uh, was the sound engineer for Blur and all their spin-offs. So Good, the Bad and the Queen. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the um, uh, I've totally forgotten. The Gorillas. Mm-hmm. Um, the Gorillas. So, yeah, Matt. So uh, I was talking with him about what would be a great amp to go with the, the park mm-hmm. for live touring. And um, so he came up with the idea of the JMP50 and we uh, searched around... My, my tech and I, Lee Slater, who's part of the uh, Gear Talk P and W. Yeah. Um, he uh, he he helped me find and, and source this amp, and um, and then Matt, the our front of house engineer, um, he had that cab lying around, and the fine people at Celestian uh, helped me get some speakers for that. So they're they're twenty watt greenbacks. Yeah. Uh, because. Um, they had a little more bottom end, actually. Hmm. So, um, and then combine that with a closed back 
four sure. twelve. Yeah. Um, it's really got low end punch. Yeah. Um, uh, I. It's kind of a grunt. Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of a grunty sound of that cabinet. But yeah. So again, you know, super bright. Uh-huh. You know, JMP's are super bright. Um, so you were saying that that cabinet is the reason that you've got the. Uh... The, on the kilt. Yeah, so the yeah. kilt with JHS, you know, is not a transparent overdrive. Right, it's kind right. of, it's supposed to be distorted, right? Right, and right, so, right. Um, um, and, you know, it's a pretty bright thing, but, uh-huh. you know, when you get into, like, the real big overdrive, distortion, fuzz thing, you know, and you're using a, a cab with a lot of low end in mm-hmm. it, you know, it can be a little bit overbearing. So sure. we put the, the low cut, low frequency cutting and that's the reason yeah. for that yeah. uh, from using the Expandoras with the Marshalls yeah. um, but yeah that so that combination the park and that Marshall with that cabinet uh, was like the last two years or so of mm. delirious touring so like when we did Kingdom of Comfort yeah. and the final tour um, that was my rig I'm sure people are wondering because we've been talking about ant pairing so much mm. Uh, well, wait. What if I only have uh, one Kemper, um, yeah. or um, or uh, I guess on on if you're running IRs or something, you you can usually run two IRs on a lot of those units. But right. if you've only got one, are we going to do dual profiles? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We have to. I mean, we're going to do all these pairings and and get them together, and um, yeah. that's 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 got to be part of because it's part of your sound. You that's know right. What I mean? Yeah. Um, all these amps sound great by themselves, but uh, more is more. That's some more. <laughs> more is more. In terms of gear, <laughs> in not, terms, yeah. not in terms of notes. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> right, right. That's true. Yeah, leave a little space in the notes, but uh, more gear is yeah. always better. That's right. right. More gear, and actually, it, it's a kind of a common theme. Um, the Blues Breaker and the JMP. Um, yeah. You like them both with the park. That's right. Which is a yeah. kind of you know, and they and they both. Do a little more of the of the saggy thing, a little yeah. more bottom end, mm-hmm. you know that sort of thing, yeah. and um, yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. that's a it's kind of a different shades of a that's of right. a similar uh, thing to pair with the park and to use yeah. by themselves. Um, how about we've talked about the uh, the '90s uh, era Korg Vox? Yeah. Um, you've used that a bunch mm-hmm. on the road and everything. Uh, there's one other amp that we've got here yeah. that is a that people might not expect. Yeah. But it's um, it's a cool amp, and it's definitely uh, part of your sound. It's yeah. it's all over your projects and stuff. What um, mm-hmm. what amp am I, t- am I talking yeah. about? Yeah, so it's the Mesa Tremovo, yeah, uh, dual rectifier, mm-hmm. um, and I bought that amp, the the one that you can see actually. I bought that '96, um, and we were recording King of Fools, mm-hmm. and so that. Actual amp and the profiles that we'll that we're making with that um, will be the sound of King of Fools. So yeah. um, if you're thinking of songs, I'm thinking of like Sanctify, All the Way, mm-hmm. uh, Promise, um, and uh, the crazy stuff in King or Cripple. You mm-hmm. know, it's like it's all that amp. So you know what I love about that amp is that. Um, so some people might might think, oh, that's like a little bit more sort of generic, a bit more like a boutique right, type right, right. amp. But actually, you know, Ed O'Brien mm-hmm. uh, with Radiohead, he was using one. And uh, Peter Buck from R.E.M. Mm-hmm. was using one on the Monster era touring yeah, yeah, yeah. and what have you. And uh, so I'm in good company there. But, you know, that is, it's not as bright yeah. as an AC-30. Mm-hmm. But um, again, I used to pair that with a, a JTM 45, which is essentially the uh, Marshall Blues Breaker, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, again that pairing of that with the the um, the, the JTM circuit um, is a really great thing. Yeah. But this amp sounds great on its own. Yeah. So you know whether that's Les Paul in the in the high gain channel for Promise or right. something like that, or Heaven, for instance, yeah. or um, the uh, all the way, um, which is the the vintage channel on there with the Gibson one three five, and and that's King of Fools as well. Yeah, is um, same guitar, same amp. You know, like it sounds killer. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get yeah. that one. Uh, yeah, I'm looking. For, I'm looking forward to that. Mm. And um, it'll be surprising. It like, will be. Yeah, that's a surprise. Yeah, and amp. I think those are super versatile amps. Mm-hmm. I you know uh, amps always get. Maybe pigeonholed as a this thing or a that yeah. thing, but 
um, obviously that's a super versatile amp, one I'm excited about, and um, one that I think is going to have a, uh, it's going to do a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of appeal. Yeah. High gain, low gain. Yeah. There's a bunch of settings on there. Yeah. There's a bunch of different totally. channels we can totally. pull out and stuff. We're, we'll yeah. make a... Uh, yeah, a killer pack of that. That'll yeah. be fun. And no, right. it'll be good to get some of those Sunday morning guys to try a Mesa amp yeah. out. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, this is great. So, th- um, you know, and this is stage one, right? Yeah. So we, the, yeah. the classic thing is stage mm-hmm. one. I've got a bunch of uh, smaller amps. Yeah. And um, like a little more unique or boutique yeah. amps. I, I just want to... <laughs> We've already been getting some requests. For right. People People know your right. stuff, you yeah. know? No, people seem crazy. to know it pretty well. Yeah. And But yeah, you've got um, you've got a really cool um, the Watkins amp, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited the, to try the that. The Wham. So yeah. actually, that, that, um, in case there's anyone out there that has one, but um, I would really love to have a Wham Dominator. Yeah. Uh, Mark II. Sure. Yeah, not Mark I or Mark III. Yeah, I'd like yeah, a Mark II. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, that's one of the best clean sound hmm. uh, amps there is. Yeah. Um, so. Hang on, I'll check reverb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, so this uh, the, this Watkins is a, is a Wem, mm-hmm. uh, Westminster it's called, and yeah. it's the 15 watt version yeah. of the Dominator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is really cool, and um, it's got a the 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 volume uh, knob is actually the on-off switch, so it kind of it's a bit like an old radio, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that, that uh, I'm sure. I wonder yeah. why they would have done away with that uh, little feature. I've got no uh, idea. <laughs> but um, yeah, so every time you turn it on, you have to wait for yeah you know, right. two minutes, whatever. Uh, but. Um, that's a really cool amp, you know, um, hand-wired AC15, yeah, sure. AD15 orange. Sure. Those um, are great. I yeah. played an AD30 for years. Yeah. That was my main gigging amp for years. Yes. Uh, people know that if you yeah. watch the channel and stuff. Those and then with the with the blessing of, uh, uh, which I need to get, you know, of, of some of the other boutique amp manufacturers, yeah. you know, I'd love to include those, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. those in absolutely in future packs. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to, we're, we're, there's a bunch of killer stuff coming up. You know, we haven't talked much about IRs, although I've mentioned them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but one of the things we're going to do as part of the Stu G collection, not only the camera profiles, which obviously you expect from Tone Junkie, uh, but a lot of you know that we've started putting out some IRs and stuff, and we've uh, been hinting that that we're going to get pretty big into the IR game. And um, uh, it's it's w- there's a plethora of gear back here that I think is deserving to be captured with multiple microphones. So we're going to capture um, these speaker cabs and these speakers, because you've got original blues here mm. you've got a 20 watt uh, mm. greenbacks those the original ones in the park i yeah. mean there's just so many great uh great speakers uh that are going to pair well with the axe effect stuff with the helix stuff um and uh it, we're going to capture those with mics that you love mics that i love and mics that are just plain cool you know what mm-hmm. i mean um so look out for some stuff you know, 57s, 906s, uh, Fathead, one of my favorites, Royer 121. You've got uh, a ribbon that you... Um, yeah. You yeah, yeah. it's like, um, I think it's made from new old stock mm-hmm. um, components, but it's called the Panther. Yeah. And um, it's from a company in California, and it's really cool. Yeah, I think yeah. that's that's definitely... Um, we got to get some IRs uh, using that mic and pairing it yeah. with other stuff. Um, but we got 414s. Uh, MD four twenty ones for the for the higher gain stuff, a little punchier stuff. Um, it's really everything. I mean, yeah. it's really trying to capture all this gear in with everything it can do. Mm-hmm. And no matter kind of what platform you want to put it on, whether it's Kemper, um, whether it's um, Axe, or just the two note like an IR loader or something. Maybe you're running a real amp. Maybe someone is using a big Marshall amp and they want a, a great. Uh, IR of a killer cab, or maybe someone's hanging on to a really awesome part combo and they're trying to get lower volume on stage. I mean, the profiles will do that. The IRs uh, will get you the sound of those speakers. I think everyone is going to love, everybody loves old blues. Mm. And there's so many amps, I mean, so many boutique amps that you can pair with blues today. Uh, If you're an IR guy, there's going to be a ton of IRs in this collection coming out kind of spanning 2019, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's really exciting because we've got a lot of time to sort of do this right and explore all these yeah. great circuits. Yeah, it has to be right. We're not trying to uh, 
just put stuff out there for yeah. the sake of it. It's yeah. like if I if I don't want to use it, yeah. then I don't want to put it out yeah. there. Yeah, right, right, right. And that's really, I mean, I'm we're profiling these things and then Stu, tell us how these are. Do they, do they work, you know? Try them out, you know? And um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm always a big fan of, I only want to put my name on something unless I'm really happy mm. with it. I'm really happy with what we've made so mm. far. You yeah, know me too. I mean? the, those park profiles sound killer. Mm. Yesterday, the amps were sounding great. Mm. We were we were profiling some more amps. And, um, yeah, I can't wait for you to test those out live. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, let me know uh, what the sound yeah. engineer says. I'm sure... Um, I'm sure the crowd will notice the difference. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Well, I don't know. Uh, we always joke the, about the, that, right? The thing Here's is, for the guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I just really appreciate like everyone's enthusiasm on some of the forums. Yeah. You know, the Facebook forums or on my Instagram or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, just really appreciate people's excitement about it. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And just real, you know, I, I want to hear from people about what they think about stuff. And, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be so cool being able to. Uh, take these tones out there. Yeah. We're also, last little hint I'll drop, it's not really even a hint, but, um, you know, doing the IRs and everything, there's no reason that we don't approximate these sounds on the Helix. Yeah. You know, and so that's what we're going to be doing as well. There's going to be Helix and HX family presets. So there'll be some for the stomp that'll be kind of condensed. We'll be limited to those six blocks with the stomp. And then there'll be full Helix ones. And that's where we're going to be able to approximate you know, kind of your sound with the delays and everything, which you're doing with, for the Kemper as well, mm -hmm. um, and sort of uh, uh, get some of those, if we're gonna capture the classic tones of these amps, yeah. capture the classic sound yeah. of of the recordings you've used them on. That's right, So and we're gonna do some performer packs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, I forgot to mention, performance packs for the Kemper as well, yeah. using, these perf uh, using these profiles, um, and that's gonna cover, I mean, everything, everything yeah. you've done, you know? Um, stuff you're doing now, yeah, and, um, and well, you so know. you know, for instance, the the, the uh, you know, so w we might do say King of Fools, right, mm -hmm. as a song, like yeah. um, we can use the uh, a, a combination of the the Messer and the Marshall, yeah. and uh, and then create the sure. the correct yeah. delays and what right, have you right, for right. that sort of stuff. But then also stuff like the Surrounded album mm -hmm. um, with Marco W. Smith. Um, we can create a performance pack around yeah. some of those songs um, or some of the uh, stuff that I did with OSS or yeah. whatever it, yeah, those absolutely. songs are. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One Sonic Society, in case you weren't following the OSS. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm really excited. Thank you. But we've got a lot of work to do. HW, we better get on with it. We, we better get on with it, Stu G. HW. Stu G. Out. Thank mm -hmm. you.